Welcome to DBL. So Katie Couric is reflecting on working with Bryant Gumbel on the Today Show. Katie and Bryant worked together from 1991 to 1997. She told Bill Maher on his podcast that Bryant was a quote unquote guys guy who had a sexist attitude, especially when she was about to go on maternity leave. Watch. He was giving me endless for taking like a month or two off. I was having my first baby. Yeah, I could see that. And he was like, why don't you just like drop drop it in the field and come back to work drop right away or something? Field. I mean, it was really <laughs> But he was, was that sounds like he was kidding. No, he was kidding, but but it was emblematic of sort of an incredibly well, I mean, sexist attitude. Why do you think okay, you're making a face, why do you think she's coming out about this now? And do you think that times have changed? Yeah, obviously, we would find that really uncomfortable right now. But I just want to say there's something important to the evolution of language and for younger people to hear what it was like. And you know why? Because I've been thinking about this all day. Because it gives motive as to why we fight so hard. If you just see it from where we are right now, it could look like we're screaming for this and wanting that and pissy about this and cancel culture that and woke this. And really, it's because of those conversations that are totally inappropriate, that were fine back then, fine, that the evolution comes of that's why we fight, so that that's not acceptable anymore. And that's why we fight for, and I, I'm sorry to bring it political, our constitutional rights that have been stripped away because they were there before and taken away and we haven't had them before. So if you don't show an evolution, you've lost the historical context of that sexist remark. Now, I know I went deep on that, but that's really how I feel. I, and I think a lot of people feel that way. Yeah. You know, I when I look at it, I've, we've seen this clip a few times today and like, I'm immediately thinking when you look at the juxtaposition between Katie Couric and Bryant Gumbel, Gumbel, um, you, it was set up that way. Like he was supposed to be that guy. That is who he was, and she was like supposed to be the ditzy, you know, funny. Well, I don't even know if ditzy. I think she was like the girl next the door. The girl next door, yeah. Yes, yeah. Pleasant. There was she was squeaky clean, and he had a little bit more of an edge to him. And that that there's something that works about that chemistry and that dynamic. Is that appropriate to say to someone who isn't, you don't have that type of relationship with to joke with? Because I think some people do have the type totally, of relationship totally. where things are lighter and you can have a joking relationship. But if two people aren't in on it, then it becomes problematic. But it was set up that way. I, and uh, clearly we were eating it up. Right. Well, that's how people talked, and we have evolved as people. And I think, to your point, Tori, one of the things that kind of upsets me and makes me disappointed is we never uh, highlight, like, all the progress that we have made. I feel like going back and taking that, there's a reason that that looks crazy, because we don't talk like that anymore. W women, as they should have said, they'll talk to me like this. I'm a professional. And people were like, oh, she's right. And we fixed it for the most part, whether it was through HR or just through being a better person. And to go back and pull that back up is, is basically, in my eyes, wiping away all the progress that's been made and been like, look what a jerk this guy is. If you pulled up anything from 30 years ago, it, the, anything from 30 years ago that is not red wine is not good. <laughs> and the problem is things are better, but that doesn't sell. That doesn't give you reason to go on your YouTube channel and rant for 30 minutes. So we have to go back 40 years and call out people for things that they said and did, rather than saying, wow, can you believe people talk like this? And then slowly through training, through uh, talking to women that they respect, people change their mind. These air quotes, pig-headed men, a lot of them would, uh, would stand up and say something if a guy said like, something like that at work. So I just hope that we highlight the fact that we talked you expressed, uh, you as women expressed your thoughts to us. We went, we went and thought about it. It was like, they're right, and we fixed it. So, like, let's be happy a little bit about progress from time to time. Jeff. I appreciate that. I really do, because we don't focus on that. I just, my, my whole thing is, like you said, going back 30 years. Was that inappropriate? Of course it was. Looking at it with today's eyeballs. But my whole thing is that in the last couple of years, we've kind of 
gone too far with this correction, right? And and it's hurt my social life. I have a great social life, but I'm meaning at work, and you know, I always bring up this example. I used to go out for beers when we first started, and we'd all, if a new person came in, let's go have some beers and tacos, Fish Taco Friday, and that was my thing. But we always joke around up here, and some people get offended even at me and Tori joking or us joking. We're friends, and we, that's how we talk we to trust each, other. each other. And if people go and repeat that story and take it out of context, we're all going to look like jerks, right? Just like Brian Couple did in this thing. But they're taking it out of context, not saying we'd say anything like that. But we take it to that edge because we're all in some way are some sort of comedians yeah, or entertainers. And we're not allowed to talk like minutes. that anymore because someone else picks up on a secondary conversation and they're offended by it. And now I'm like, you know what? I'm not going out anymore. I'm not taking that chance. You have to be very careful. Very careful because my livelihood people. is on the yes. line and it's a gotcha culture. To Al's point, we've come a long way. We don't acknowledge that. People want to go back and be like, gotcha. I know. I heard you say that. It was recording. And somehow they get pleasure out of canceling your your job and your future and putting food in your family's mouth. We've gone too far. I appreciate the correction. We needed to be corrected, right. a lot of it. But it's gone too far now, and it's hurting people's social lives. Just to point out, this goes in favor of what you're saying, how long ago this was. This was before the Internet. So <laughs> here's a clip of, the, of both Katie and Brian right here. What do you mean? That's big. What, how does one? What do you write to it like mail? No, a lot of people use it and communicate. With, I guess they can communicate with NBC writers and producers. Allison, can you explain what internet is? No, she can't say anything in ten seconds or less. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh. oh. Now that's that. If you're gonna pull a comment, <laughs> I think that was the one, and that goes to speaking about it's a the different mentality. Time. But I do want to yeah. say because I appreciate and I agree with what everyone's saying, but the government has yet to really fix it. We still don't have mandated maternity leave in this country. We're the only developed country to not have mandated family leave, paternal leave, maternity leave. That's insane. It's insane. I, I've seen a waitress, no joke. This was back in LA that had a newborn, like five-day-old baby wrapped around her while she was serving tables. She's like, I can't afford. It's a global embarrassment. So socially, hopefully, yes, we're making progress. The government, no, we, we have not made any progress, and that's upsetting. Years. Okay, so there is a new trend on TikTok, and it's all about women who are embracing the traditional role of a wife. The so-called trad wives are typically stay-at-home moms and wives. They show off their skills doing things like making cereal from scratch or getting all dolled up for their husband when he comes home from work. Now, one person even posted a how-to video. Watch this. The man, he is the provider, the main breadwinner. He goes out of the house and works. The woman, the wife, she is the homemaker. She takes care of the home. She takes care of herself and she does the cooking and the cleaning. Cooking and cleaning are life skills that can benefit you and your family forever. Make sure you are keeping up with your beauty and yourself. You are fit, you are healthy because you and your husband will benefit from this. Erica? Hmm. Well, I wore my best trad wife outfit today. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Can we get some pie? Um, so, okay, here, this is my issue. People need to live their lives the way that they see fit. Um, for a year, I was a stay-at-home wife. Just a stay-at-home wife. I took care of everything that needed to be taken care of in the house, and I went above and beyond for my husband because he was providing for our household, and when he was out of work, he did the same for me. That's called partnership. If you want to relinquish your autonomy or if you want to have your husband be the person who makes all the decisions unilaterally, that's on you. My issue is the lack of transparency because a lot of these women are on here and they're not being honest with the fact that not only are their husbands millionaires, yes. but they're also making money as content creators, models, which means that they are bringing in in a household income. Business women. If you are going to go on and encourage young women who think that they should be taken care of or want to be taken care of, have a plan. First of all, honey, do, is there any transparency in the financial situation? Do you know if he leases or rents or, or owns? Do you know if he's over leveraged? Do you have any access to any of those things since you aren't going to be bringing in a household income? 
Is there transparency in how things are going to go should everything fall apart? The last thing I want you to do at this point, since we're talking about being beautiful for your husband, is waste all of your formative years on a man who's going to leave you in 10 years, and now you don't even have a pedal to poop but Pepitin. <laughs> oh, I mean, and it's so many women end up in this situation. Yes. And it's like ignorance is bliss. Ignorance is bliss until you have to file for bankruptcy. Ignorance is bliss until you're living in your car because this man technically doesn't have to give you the lifestyle that you've become accustomed to. So I think that when we're having these conversations, too many people pull the wool over their heads and think like, for now, I'm taken care of, never thinking about the future. So just be honest about what your situation is. If you're going to encourage other women to do it.